Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well, here's a question that comes up pretty often. How to add a button to your header up here? Now there's several ways you can do it. And I'll show you a couple of them today. The first way is if you've got an existing header with a menu, I'll show you how to add it with a little bit of CSS using your menu. Don't let the CSS put you off. Any CSS I write, I'll put down below the video for you to use. And then I'll show you another way of doing it by creating a custom header from scratch. So let's get started. I'm going to go in and undo what I've got going on here. I'm working in the custom CSS panel today. To get there, go to your dashboard, down to appearance, go down to customize, Customize will bring you right here. Right at the bottom, you'll find a panel called Additional CSS. So I'm going to take away the CSS that I've written for this here. I'll leave the title up there. Always a good idea to have a title. That way, if you write a lot of code like I do, it makes things easier to find. And also, it's a courtesy if anybody edits the site after you. OK, so we're back to a default Divi menu right here. Now what I'm going to do is go down to my dashboard. I'm going to go down to my actual menu. And whatever menu you're using for your top menu, mine's called top menu, I'll get rid of this and we'll start from scratch. I'm going to use a custom link right here. Just hit the little chevron to open it up. Put the link in where you want your button to go. I'll just put a hashtag in as I haven't got a link. And whatever you want your new button to say here. Well, let's be a bit more creative. Let's say huge sale. And we'll add that to the menu. We need to save our changes. That's been updated. Let's go back to our customizer and refresh the page. We should have our new button up there. There we go. There it is, our huge sale link up in our menu there. So what I want to do is pull this over here, really, and get this button up here and have it on the right hand side. If you just want to turn it into the button, we can do that bit first if you like. Let's get back into our additional CSS panel here. I'm using Google Chrome with the great inspector tools. So if I right click and hit inspect, I can look at this menu item. And there we have it. If we look up here, each of these menu items has a unique number. So that means we can target them individually, which is great. So I'm going to select this one our huge sale there, menu item 422. We're going to double click on it. I'm actually going to select, left click and drag that last class name right there, menu item 422. Control C to copy. For anybody who doesn't know anything, where there's a gap, that's a new class name. There's a gap, new class name, gap, new class name. And the ones with hyphens, that's a continuing class name right there. Well, we just need this one right here. So I've copied that. It's a class name, so all class names have to have a dot or a period in front of them. So there's a dot. I'm going to paste that class name. Now, the actual link itself is the A tag or the anchor tag just down below. So I want to target the A, really, when I'm decorating this. So now we know what we want to edit. I can open and close some curly brackets, drop down, and we can start to decorate it. So firstly, let's give it a background. I'm just going to say blue for argument so you can see what's going on. As you can see, that's now got a blue background to it. I want to change that to the color of my actual logo blue. I've got a free chrome color picker right here. I'm just going to grab this blue color. There it is, the hex code. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to change that blue to that hex code. All hex codes have to have a hashtag in front, so it's hashtag and then a number. There we go, that's got my blue color. But of course I can't see the writing very well, so let's turn the writing to a color that we can see, like white. To do that, I'm going to say color, white, which is FFF. Now it hasn't changed it, so we've got to overwrite the default styles by adding important. I don't like to add important if I don't have to, but sometimes you have to. So here we go, it's exclamation, important. And there you go, as you can see, 
we can see that now. Okay, I'm going to use a bit of padding to set how wide I want it. And again, we'll probably have to overwrite the current styles there. So I'm going to say padding, colon. Let's give it 10 pixels all round. It's kind of worked. It's still got too much at the bottom. So let's try adding important to that to overwrite the bottom padding. There we go. That's given it 10 all round, which is great. Let's put a semicolon on the end. To make it a little bit more like a button, I'm going to give it slightly rounded corners. So I'll do that with border radius. Dash radius. And let's say give it four pixels. I think that's the default for Divi type buttons, but obviously give it what you want. If you want to make it into a sort of pill shape, give it a high border radius like 40. And you'll have a rounded button like that. But four is fine for me right now. OK, that's pretty much all you need to do if you just want a button like that. If you don't want to segregate it, let's just close this inspector down. But you could add a hover state to it. Let's change that background color hover state. It's got that default op opacity. Let's change it to the other blue color there. So I'm going to copy this class name. Control C. I'm going to drop down a couple. I'm going to paste it in and right after the A with no gap, I'm going to put colon, hover, the word hover, that is. Open and close some new curly brackets right there. And let's just steal this background right here. We'll paste that in and let's get our new color, this light blue here. Again, I'll grab my little color picker. And we'll replace that hex code. Make sure you've got the hashtag in there still. Now when we hover over, it goes to that light blue, which is fine. And the actual time it's taking is fine too. So I'm going to leave mine just like that. Great. So there's your little button. But a lot of people like to have the sort of menu bits over here and the button sort of way over to the right hand side there. If you want to do that, let's inspect our header right here. And let's see the ET top nav up there. It's a little short. We need to make it bigger if we're going to bring it over here. So let's copy this class name. Remember it's a, this is actually an ID, not a class name. So IDs have a hashtag in front of them, then the class name. And we want to make it wider, so I'm going to make it about 80% width wise. So let's open and close some curly brackets. And let's say width 80%. Now let's have a look at it. It's a lot wider now. And that's brought it over some. And I still think we've got too much padding on the left hand side. And that's the green part up there. So let's take that padding left down and make it our own. So let's add a semicolon. Padding left. I'll give it 50 pixels. We may have to overwrite some styles again here. Let's try the important on that one. There we go. That's brought that over. Great. Let's hover over here. Looks like we've got enough space for it. But we're going to have a problem with the top menu nav right there. That's not going to let us push it out of there. So let's grab this one and make it wider too. Top menu nav. Control C. To copy. And again, it's an ID. So we need a hashtag in front of it. Boom, and close some curly brackets. And let's make this one 100% of the available space that it's got. We'll take a look at that now. That's better. So we've got some room to move that button across now. Let's just check that top menu underneath is not wide enough still. So we need to add that ID to it also. So I'm going to copy that. I'm simply going to put a comma after our top menu nav there because we want to add another one and have it do the same thing. Hashtag and then the ID right there. Let's check that now. 
that's great so now we should be able to float this menu item over the right hand side so let's grab it I just want the menu item 422 not with the link this time because that'll be inside it anyway I'm going to copy that and let's just roll down just below its original there open and close some curly black brackets we'll float it right and we may have to force it let's say float right that's great it's pushed it all the way over here it looks like we need to pull it out the margin up slightly to get it back up where we should have it let's do that with a bit of negative top margin Yeah, let's say minus 10 and see where that gets us minus 10 pixels let's say that's pretty much spot on right there so there you have it guys there's one way of doing it with a bit of code pretty easy and I'll paste this code down below if anybody wants to copy it and paste it just remember to change your menu item number to whatever yours is it's not going to be the same as mine or if it's a, a different kind of link it might have a different name so just need to change that if you're going to copy and paste this okay I'm now going to take this all the way all away and I'll show you how to do it another way by building a custom header for your site so let's just cut this out and as you can see it's returned the back to how it was initially so I'm going to get out of here and we'll go back to our dashboard again and if you go down to Divi this time go to theme builder we can add a global header so click on the add global header I'm going to hit build global header I'm going to build mine from scratch and we'll keep this pretty simple now what I want is my logo and menu one side and a button on the right hand side just like we did with the code so I'm going to use this sort of style of row and I'm going to use a menu module for the left hand side there it is top menu is the menu I want to put in there same as the one we've been using I'm going to add my logo great don't want a search icon or a shopping cart icon I just want to take that logo down a little bit in size I'm going to go over to sizing I've got logo size here or logo width I'm gonna pull that down just a little bit make that a little bit smaller that's great just like that okay I'm gonna leave that just as it is now in a minute I'll have to go in and get rid of that huge sale from that actual menu because we're gonna put a button in right here by just hitting the plus sign I'm gonna add a button module I've obviously got a default red button over there that's fine so let's go over and let's see same thing I guess huge sale obviously put your link in down below usual best practices if you're linking to your own site same window off-site put it in a new tab so let's make this button a bit more like our other one so I'm gonna go into the button this text size I think we're about 14 or 15 pixels that looks about right there let's make that 14 text colors fine the background color was that logo color and I don't want a border and a border radius was about four pixels from memory get rid of that border down there I'm happy with the shape of that so we just need to push it down a little bit so we'll do that with some spacing right here we use margin padding is going to make the button fatter and wider margin is going to push it up or down let's try 20 picks on top that's pretty much there I'd say I'm going to leave that just like that okay just so we can see our little header right here I'm going to put a bit of box shadow on the top. So I've gone into the section, the blue tab at the top there. I'm going to go to design, 
box shadow. A bit of bo the bottom of it. There you can see the bottom of it. That's way too wide. So what I'm going to do while I'm in my design, I'm going to go to spacing. I'm going to take away any padding top and bottom by putting a zero in there. Just put a zero in and hit the chain. It'll do the bottom for you. Still a bit wide, so we can take a bit away from our row if we want to. Green tab for the row. Let's go in there. Spacing. Let's try 10 top and bottom. Padding's where I want to be. Let's try 10. That looks okay on the top. Try it on the bottom. Yeah, I think that's going to work for me. Absolutely fine. We've got a menu where we want it. Buttons where we want it. And we've got our logo where we want it. Now, I want to make this sticky so it stays on top of everything where it is. So to make sure it does that, I'm going to go back into this section here. I'm going to go over to Advanced. All the way down to Scroll Effects. Sticky Position. Stick to Top. No offset. I want it to stop. I don't want any limit at the bottom. And that should do it for us. Now, let's save this. exit out make sure our changes are saved out there and let's visit the site and there we go guys there's our custom header with our logo our menu and our button on the right hand side there so there's two ways to do it and don't forget for the CSS version the CSS will be down below the video for anybody that wants to cut and paste just remember to put in your correct link number if you're using that method. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.